<coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm going to talk about some old work of mine with collaboration with Professor Zenik Stupik and uh, my colleague uh, Peter Swami. Uh, it is an old work, but uh, I would like to share some ideas with, uh, with you because uh, recently I have discovered this, that our results were uh, represented or uh, repeated in cases of um, uh, <coughs> reality. so maybe interesting. In, in here we study uh, Randall syndrome model in, with respect with astrophysical observation. And uh, Randall syndrome model is uh, basically a situation with, when we have a free brain that our universe is a free brain embedded in a vast space time. And uh, we are focusing in cases when this vast space time has only one additional space uh, dimension. So in our cases, we have five dimensional uh, bulk space time. This, uh, these Randall syndrome models were uh, considered firstly uh, to solve hierarchy problem. But it was shown that five dimensional cases are not good for uh, solving this problem because you need at least uh, six uh, dimensions in bulk in order to get a sub millimeter uh, correction to Newton uh, uh, gravitation theory. So our model is not good uh, suited for this problem. But uh, five dimensional cases or models are interesting in maybe in the future in uh, more developed uh, theories in M theory. When we have to, in this theory, we have to have some uh, large uh, spatial dimension. So maybe in the future, this model can test it effective M theory. Uh, next, uh, these two gentlemen also studied this model and they showed that uh, they found a solution to effective Einstein equations on the brain. And uh, they show that this uh, solution can represent it, represents a rotating black hole. Okay, this, this is the this is the day solution they found, and this uh, this metric is formally same as the Kerr-Riemann metric, with slight distinction, namely that there should be some charge q q squared, but in, in our case there is a entity we call this called uh, we call this entity. A tidal charge, tidal because uh, it represents some um, some gravitation, tidal gravitation forces from the bulk, which influences uh, our brain, and uh, charge we call it charge because this similarity with uh, Kerr-Newman metric. So uh, the main main uh, distinction between Kerr-Newman is that this solution is vacuum solution, and uh, this parameter can be also negative which wasn't possible in the case of Kerr-Newman metric. Uh, okay, A is a spin parameter. So, and also some colleagues of mine and some other uh, workers studied this solution and find that in order to have uh, some meaningful physics in a stellar situation or in a uh, strong field like in strong uh, gravitation field, this parameter B has to be bounded by this region. It's from minus one to one only. So this is our setup. And now let me go straight to, the, to our results because the time is really limited. So I will show you what we have found. And <coughs> we have found some uh, disturbing uh, pathologies in these models. And these pathologies were also found in abdel models. So uh, it is quite interesting that to try to uh, use this, uh, let's say, not well understood models uh, inspired by string theory in uh, or, or randomizable gravitation theories on astrophysics situations leads to these uh, problems. So our results. On this, on this figure, there is a spin parameter A and B parameter tidal charge and this parameter space divided uh, space-time into some regions with respect to uh, photon-circular orbits. These numbers 
represents the number of uh, first number is a number of stable circular orbits in the space-time, and the second number is number of unstable circular orbits. Photon, uh, photon <coughs> is uh, important. Here. So you can see immediately that that uh, for negative values of tidal charge, nothing new is going on, or nothing strange, let's say. The space-time is behave, behaving rather properly. There are no uh, photon circular orbits. But this is not the case in some com com uh, combination of A and B when B is uh, positive. So in, it is also true in Kerr-Newman metric. <coughs> when we have situation with uh, stable photon circular orbits. And this is interesting, but it, it, it came to price because this situation is possible only because in these space times there exists a region, a so-called uh, so time machine region, which is a region where the causality is violated. So it is very bad. But uh, in case for black holes, uh, this region is always uh, hidden under the uh, horizon, so it's maybe not so wrong. Next, uh, what, is, what was interesting, we found that marginally stable orbits do not always exist in this, in this model. For black holes, no problems here. And you see that the tidal charge has the, has the influence on horizon Horizon is some, somehow expanding in this with, with negative uh, values of B. Uh, I mean that you can you can have more more spin parameter in order to have black hole. In this in this combination of these parameters, there is no marginally stable orbit for minus family uh, solution of orbits, and in this combination there is no marginally stable orbit whatsoever. What is interesting is that in these models, marginal stable orbit are not innermost stable, innermost ice core, innermost stable circular orbits. This, these two notions divided uh, because uh, marginal stable orbit is uh, defined as an influx point of effective potential, and innermost stable orbit, as the name suggests, is a just orbit which, is the, uh, which has lowest R. And we have uh, we have found that if you have uh, this tidal charge greater than one, then you have al always then you always have I score at r equal to b. But for com for uh, b uh, between zero and one, you always do not have I score, and sometimes you also do not have a marginally stable orbit. If you combine these two features, which I am just describing. If you combine space-time with no uh, marginally stable orbit and with uh, some uh, photons, stable circular orbit, you end up with a very uh, peculiar situation. I, I demonstrate the problem here on effective potential. This is a plot of effective potential and uh, with um, distinct values of um, what is it? Uh, angular momentum. And you can see that there is always some minima of effective potential. It corresponds to stable orbit, and this minima is going as <coughs> as uh, L is decreasing, is going down. And this feature of effective potential uh, remains same. It can be can be shown more precisely in the next slide when I uh, depicted asymptotic behavior of effective potential. So here you can imagine that uh, that the uh, <coughs> angular momentum is infinite, and you see that this minimum prevail. So if you if you have if you consider, for example, that we have we have some black hole for naked singularity with combination of A and B, so that you do not have marginally stable orbit, and you imagine that you have just ordinary accretion disk, capillary accretion disk thing, then you you have to understand that this disk do not have an edge. Accretion, accretion mass is accreting on the singularity. Uh, and uh, also if you have situation with the in this case exists some stable photon orbit, then this accretion disk actually accreting is accreting on this stable photon orbit. When uh, 
if you have if you want to have some particle on the stable photon orbit, uh, it is clear that this particle has to have uh, a angular momentum infinite. So this is the first problem which I was uh, describing. And also, if you calculate effectivity of such a process, you find also infinity. So uh, this is very pathological uh, space time. And of course, you may argue that it is not clear I mean, if uh, accretion will occur. I will try to demonstrate it in a, in a minute, I believe. Oh. In animation, I, I wanted to. So this is a this is an animation of effective potential, and uh, this uh, green point is its minimum. And as in the picture, the uh, angular momentum is always decreasing, and you see that this this problem is here that accretion disk can exist because this process is uh, continuous. There is no problem. Of course, these, uh, these situations are very trivial, so it can be proven but analytically that it is the case. But I just wanted to show you. So, uh, good. Now, there, there is a, the same situation <coughs> which, can be, which can be seen in a control plot of uh, derivation of effective potential. This control plot is set to, the, the level is set to zero, so an, any point here is corresponding to some uh, minima or maxima, in this case, in this case to minima <laughs> effective potential. Now uh, this, this picture course, uh, shows the, this innermost stable circular orbit is here. As I have said, if you have B greater than one, you have no marginally stable orbit because there is no maximum, there is always minimum, but this, this R is the least. The next picture is some other combination of these parameters, and uh, this behavior seems to be uh, pathological, but it is not because there is the there is a returning point, the B is greater than 1, so this is ISCO, and uh, if you have accretion disk, which is following this, this path, it will end here. It cannot go this part because actually you cannot see that, but this uh, this it corresponds to effective potential with increasing energy. So it is not accretion as BR is two, but in this combination when B is uh, less than one, this is the problem that accretion is is going down here and then continues accreting with two infinity. Of course, there is a problem that this this uh, regime of accretion is very very fine tuned. The, okay. <laughs> the um, these orbits are very neatly tied together. So maybe it would be a problem to actually uh, throw L out of the system. But we did, we did not uh, came with uh, some problem. Uh, analytically, it is it is correct that is it is go to infinity. Okay, this is the main result. Again, we have A and B parameters, and this region is the problematic region, the combination when, effect, when uh, marginally, stable don't, marginally stable orbits don't exist and stable photon e orbit exists. So luckily, this, uh, this picture is, has some uh, hope because it is, it, as you can see, Black holes do not have any problems, only naked singularities. So we can just say that naked singularities do not exist and we have no problem. Uh, may, problem may be occurred with, if we consider superspinners, because uh, we know that superspinners uh, exist or existed at least. And so I suggested that this, this uh, result maybe can be used in uh, super spin to show that uh, there has to be some minimal 
some minimal uh, radius of super spinner under which this problem occurs and uh, everything would be okay. So I, I believe I don't have time to, so I will skip this and thank you for your attention. <laughs>